Uh, I thank uh, my friend and, and colleague and the uh, ranking member of the uh, subcommittee for yielding some time on this important bill. Uh, yes, indeed, we have uh, spent uh, a number of years uh, overseeing, uh, holding hearings and working uh, to push uh, for a more modern public alert uh, warning system. Uh, so this legislation is somewhat overdue. In fact, we passed a similar legislation last year uh, in the House. Uh, I, I do support the legislation. However, I will point out it's, it's a bit irregular because we passed it a year ago and suddenly we're passing a version which just happens to have come from a senator who just happens to be one of the most vulnerable Republicans up for re-election so he can get a, a, a notch uh, on his belt. But hey, that's the way things work around here. Sometimes we get things good done for sometimes the wrong reasons. It should have been done a year ago. The uh, Senate should have taken up our version. Uh, that said, uh, this will uh, modernize the system tremendously. Uh, you know, this is, we're, we're well past the days of Connell Rad uh, alerts, uh, yet really the technology has not moved uh, as far as it could uh, for the 21st century. Uh, in particular, I was just uh, over in Japan uh, with the congressional delegation observing uh, what they've done uh, post their uh, uh, dramatic earthquake event uh, and tsunamis, and uh, the experience is instructive. Uh, they first estimated uh, the wave heights and were able to get the message out uh, to some extent uh, on public broadcast and uh, with sirens uh, before uh, further shocks uh, brought down the grid uh, and silenced for the most part uh, the sirens. Unfortunately, the first estimates were off. Uh, when the waves reached uh, the uh, near shore uh, monitoring devices, they found that they were considerably higher and a much more vigorous uh, evacuation uh, should have been conducted. Uh, unfortunately, at that point, uh, they had no way uh, to get the word out uh, to the people uh, who had uh, gone to high ground but not high enough, or those who had sheltered in place when they believed the uh, height of the tsunami would be less. Uh, so they lost uh, many lives, they feel, unnecessarily because of a lack of redundancy in the system. Uh, this will move us toward a redundant system. They have moved now to a cellular-based system, uh, so individuals uh, can be uh, alerted. Uh, I was just at a tsunami event in the town of Florence, Oregon, uh, where it's called the Blue Line, where they have evacuation routes and people say, well, when do I stop running or driving? Uh, and so they're painting lines on those uh, critical routes at one point where you are safe from the highest predicted uh, tsunami. Uh, and they did uh, essentially a drill while we were there, but you couldn't even hear the siren. Uh, these are World War II air raid sirens. Uh, some of them work, some of them don't. Uh, so we need a much more robust uh, and redundant system because we know that the Pacific Northwest and Northern California uh, it's only when, uh, not if, uh, we will have a dramatic earthquake, uh, potentially with a magnitude up to nine, uh, with a subsequent tsunami, uh, and we need in place of a, both uh, deep ocean detection uh, to give more warning time, wave detection to give more warning time, and a robust system uh, to inform the people uh, where to go and how to go. Uh, how far they need to go uh, in, in these events. So uh, this is overdue legislation, and uh, I do urge its adoption. With that, I would uh, thank the gentleman and yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Pennsylvania.